the opportunity uh, to come over and talk to our arch rivals over here, the Providence Friars, and uh, to talk to you, Matt. Uh, what Chris is asking me to do is talk about leadership. And uh, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and profess that I'm the greatest leader, but there's some attributes that we look for in our men. What we try to do at Brown University is to create a team of leaders and a, and a group of men who everybody takes ownership and takes pride in what we're doing. When you've got 38 men, or 40 men, or how many men do you have on a team, who are all acting like leaders and believe they're a leader, then you've got 38, 40 men doing the right things and leading that team to victories. Being a leader isn't always easy. How many of you here are captains of your different teams, lacrosse or other teams? How many guys have been a captain? Okay, so some of you have had that experience. Um, the greatest thing is being a captain a second time. Uh, the first time you're a captain, you, it's sort of, wow, i got a lot of pressure. Do I have to step up and talk in the huddles? What if coach is yelling at us and we're not having a great practice? Is it upon me as a captain to grab this team and say, hey, fellas, come over here. Coach, we got them for two minutes. Let me, i got to talk to the guys right now. How many times have you been in a responsibility where you weren't a captain, but you wanted to be a leader? You wanted to step up and say something. If you've started having those emotions, started having those feelings, you're taking the first step to really being a leader. If this game is important to you, whatever it is in life. We talk about being a, being a leader, we're talking about the game of lacrosse right now. But there's no talk about being a leader in life. Someday you're going to lead a family. Okay. Are you going to be a great leader of your family? Maybe you'll lead a business. Okay. Who you are will define the strength of your family, the strength of your business, and certainly at this point, the strength of your team. We start off with a, a little simple equation. Performance equals potential minus interference. Performance equals potential minus the interference. Okay, so simple math majors. What happens if we get rid of interference? Performance equals potential. Okay, perfect. Give me an interference. What's that? I can't hear you. Penalties. Penalties could be interference. Okay, give me something else. Girls. Girls could be interference. What else? What do you got? Give me interference. Arguments amongst the team. We don't have team cohesion. Give me another one. Between the staff, disagreeing with the staff. All right, uh, anyone else? Other ideas? As a leader, you help reduce the amount of interference. That interference might be inside yourself. You may dis disagree with the coach. You may say there's no way we should be playing this offense against this team. Okay? What happens if you continue to disagree with that coach? Is that an inter Do you think an interference occurs? Probably. Sometimes, as a leader, even if you're a captain, you decide to accept what the coach's staff is asking for, accept what the rest of the team is accepted for. It's called a little bit of sacrifice. Performance equals potential minus interference. Reduce the amount of inter interference. At the college level, we have to worry about alcohol use. I know it's, it's, it's something you can't do in high school. It's a reality. I'm sure you see it. Don't allow drugs or alcohol. Those are interferences. The, the things you came up with are great ones. The team bonding, the team cohesion. And things are great when you're winning. It's when you're losing. They talk about when do great leaders rise up in times of great need. So that's what we're talking about. When the leaders step up. This, those analogies have been obviously used in, in true battles of war. But in terms of the smaller picture of this game, this game of lacrosse, when things aren't going great, that's when people need to step up. That segues me how we react and how we respond to the things in our lives truly define it. How we react, how we respond. You and I, we control our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions when something bad happens or something great happens. We actually control that. Some guy cuts you off. You're driving your car. Some guy cuts you off. What do you want to do? Right. You might be having a great day thinking about this 
great girl you just met, or that game-winning goal that your team scored in overtime right, to beat Princeton, and all of a sudden you're like, that jerk. Okay, you control that thought, though. You control whether that's going to steal your aim, that's going to steal your joy, that's going to who you're going to be. You're running down the field. You pick up a tough ground ball. The guy slashes you. Push from behind. You're looking at the referee. No call. The ball's going the other way. How do you react? How do you respond? How you react and how you respond in that situation truly defines who you are. If you're one of those attackmen who looks at the referee, puts his arms out to the side, looks at the coach, right, pisses and moans, throws the stick, you're defining yourself. If you're one of those guys who goes out there and tries to get the ball right back and doesn't complain to the referees, you're defining yourself in a different way. Life is unbelievably great. There's some curveballs that are thrown at us. How we react to those defines who we are. And it could be the worst thing could happen. It could be a death of a family member. Okay, it could be dumped by a girl. You could lose a big game out here. And there's certain emotions that we have to go through, you know, sadness depending on the severity of the things I just, the examples I just gave. But how we react, we control our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. We control those. How we react defines who we are. And we do control that. That's what we ask of our men at Brown University. We talk about not yelling at the referees. I'm the only one who talks to the referees. Uh, I love that this year, Princeton scored a goal with right at the end of the first quarter, right at the end of the buzzer. One of those bang, bang, did the horn blow first? Was it a goal? Was it not a goal? So close, the referee said, it's a goal. Princeton's up 2 nothing. There's a part of me that wanted to go ape. I wanted to start yelling and screaming. But what is that going to accomplish? Right there, I had to make a decision. Do I control my thoughts and actions? One party wanted to do one thing for sure. How is that going to help us win the game? I'm not saying you're never going to see me go, you know, get upset with the referees and you hoot and howl. But I just want to give you an example. That most of the time, we define who we are by how we respond. We stop right there. Any questions? Any thoughts? Anything to add? Similar situation? objective at Brown University is to build men. Talk to you. Good luck and enjoy the uh, little cross experience here at Providence.